Hey guys. In today's video, we're going to be going over the Beyond League mechanic and how it interacts with the different parts of endgame content. I thought this would be an interesting video to do because we haven't seen uh, we haven't seen Beyond on the map device since Ritual. It's been almost a year. So some of you newer players might not be taking full advantage of this map mod. Now, the Beyond map mod reads, slaying enemies close together in areas has a percentage chance to attract monsters from beyond. So conceptually, what this means is you want to be using the Beyond mechanic in maps that are very tightly packed or that at least have so many monsters that they're grouped together quite closely. Now, this percentage stacks, so if you're doing beyond, it's good to have multiple sources of it. The default Xana map device, which costs 5 chaos, gives you 15% chance for slaying monsters to attract the beyond demons. You can get an extra 3% chance from the Atlas passives and Glenet Cairns, which makes that zone particularly nice for farming beyond. Now you can get 5% extra from Watchstones with the Fraught modifier. It's technically 4%, but when you get the uh, Uncharted Realms Atlas passives, Secrets of the Stone, it will go up to 5%. So that means any map you run in Glenet Cairns gives you a base 23% chance to attract monsters from beyond. Now if you get the really sought after uh, Awakened Sextant roll, you get an additional 6% which bumps it up to 29%. And if you roll beyond on your map, that's 13%. So the theoretical maximum, which you probably won't ever run, is 42% chance. Now, what does it mean to summon monsters from beyond? When, when this percentage procs and you succeed in summoning the monsters, you'll get a pack and it will have some magic in one rare monster. And those are the beyond demons. And then when you kill those, you can summon more if you kill enough of those close together. And then it keeps chaining until the third time where it will spawn a unique Beyond boss. Um, this is a great multiplier to an already juicy map because you're just adding all these extra monsters and a lot of them are guaranteed to be rare or even unique. Um, so let's talk about those watchstones that you can get. The one that you should be aiming for is the Fraught one, which gives you the 1% chance to attract monsters. However, there's also a secondary one that's cheaper, and it has the mod, Beyond Portals and Areas have a 5% chance to spawn an additional Beyond Demon. And this sounds pretty good, although let me explain what it actually does. This does not add rares into the map. It just, when this thing procs, there's always one rare, and then there's like a bunch of shittier monsters. And this is just going to spawn one additional monster. So, um, I personally wouldn't bother with this. Uh, it, it sounds okay, but in reality, I mean, more monsters is fine, but it's not, it doesn't give you the rare. Now let's go over on the different, uh, rewards that you get for monster types. So magic monsters, they give a little bit extra quant, a little bit extra rarity. Rare monsters give you 1000 increased rarity and even more increased quantity. So you're going to get a lot more uh, currency and div cards from rare monsters. And then unique are similar to rare monsters but with even more quantity. So uh, 
this just kind of puts into perspective the rewards of scaling by adding a lot of additional rares and uniques into a map. That's already juicy to begin with. Now, rarity, if you guys don't know, that's chase uniques like Headhunter and Mageblood. Although, when they're called chase uniques, it's called that for a reason. In all my years of playing, I've only ever dropped a Headhunter from a mob one time. That was in Blight League. So, if you're sacking rarity, that's sort of a it's sort of a trap. Quantity is currency and div cards. So exalted orbs, divine orbs, you know, like the saint treasure card, the scout card, etc. Like the quantity helps you get more of the chase div cards specific to your map. Now, what the reliquary and divination scarabs do is there a more multiplier on rarity for divinate or for reliquary and divination for quantity but only quantity of div cards so you get a 50 100 or 150 percent more multiplier when you have a ton of rare monsters that you're adding in through sextants beyond nemesis possibly and your scarabs uh, you can get a lot of value because it's a more multiplier like a hundred percent more would be double double the quantity that's already 1400 so that's the use of these scarabs um, the conclusions are you want to use these partic particular scarabs when you have large, po large pack size coupled with the beyond modifier um, divination scarabs right now are very expensive. I wouldn't be using them on a regular cheap mapping strategy. I would actually probably sell them if you're doing a relatively cheap and easy strategy. Um, you should be using them on Nemesis 3 if there is a particular rare chase valuable div card on the Nemesis 3 map you're using. And also, chase uniques are incredibly rare, and you should not expect to get them, even if you're stacking a lot of rare monsters and you're throwing in a reliquary scarab. So, you can use reliquary scarabs for fun, but there is really no place for them in a normal mapping strategy. So, since Glenet Cairn is the map uh, quadrant that gives you 3% implicit beyond. We are going to go over some different choices if you want to pursue a beyond mapping strat. Silo, which is a T15 map, is one of the better options. The pros are that it's very, uh, it's very dense and tightly packed. I think it has the best layout. It's just sort of like a snaking tunnel. The monsters are all really close together. It's very easy to run through it. It's very good with the scourge mechanic because it's just it's just a line, so you can just run back and forth, clear both sides easily. The cons are that there's nothing exciting that you can drop in terms of divination cards. So you would definitely not be putting in a divination scarab if you're running silo. Now, port. The pros are that it has the Saints Treasure Exalted Orb card, and it's quite a reliable drop. This uh, div card isn't too rare. If you were ever doing my Alleyways Exalted Orb strat, um, this map might be comfortable for you to guy for you guys to do. Um, the cons is it's the it's the worst layout out of these four choices but it's still a pretty good layout. Um, if you are doing port, I still would recommend not using a divination uh, scarab because uh, like a saint's treasures, it's not like one of them's not that expensive and these divination scarabs are so expensive right now. 
So unless the scarabs drop down in price, um, you're still going to get tons of Saints Treasure cards without spending the exorbitant amount of chaos it requires to use a Divination Scarab. Now, my personal favorite probably would be Tropical Island. This is a T14. The pros are it gives a new divination card called the Scout. This is quite a rare drop, so you're not going to be getting it reliably like Saint's Treasure. But it's uh, almost, it's, I believe, let me check. It's one, eight of them turn in for seven exalted orbs. So it's a little bit less than one exalted orb per card. Um, I can't think of any cons for this map. It's a pretty fun layout. Um, if you guys have any problems with this map, I'd be interested to hear in the comments. I think it's a great map, although all these maps are great. Uh, the last one would be Park. Park is a T15, like Silo, whereas these two are T14s. The pros are... It's a great open layout, and since it's the only open layout out of all three of these, it's the only one that can run Legion well. The Tropical Island's somewhat open. It's not bad for Legion. In fact, maybe I'd say Tropical Island is fine for Legion as well, but Park's probably a little bit better. But the cons are there's no, there's no Chase Divination cards. I personally like these two the most. Tropical Island and Silo. I think it's important if you're going to do Glenet Cairn to do 1T15 and 1T14 because for some reason this league it's very easy to sustain a T16 but it's difficult to sustain a T14 or 15 so you would want to choose a 14 and a 15 in the area and potentially, potentially like flip-flop between different strats. So you might want to do the strat and then also go back and do some alleyways as well. But you can't go wrong with any of these. Now, for the con concluding thoughts, should I switch from the T at T16 alleyways strat into a beyond strat? Alleyways is safer for leveling. It's easier to run. There's no sunk cost. The, the wash zones are like three and a half X, I think. So around 14 exalts right now. The profits are very reliable in the alleyway strat. Um, you can bulk sell the, those essences for quite a bit. And uh, it's very accessible because it's only a three chaos per map kind of deal. Now, what do I need to start this beyond strat? You definitely want to have full awakening atlas bonus because that amplifies the modifiers on the map and we're stacking so many modifiers. Um, you don't actually need to have four fraught watchstones but once you have the, wa the four fraught watchstones as well as the implicit um, in the Glenet Cairns area you're basically getting this sextant for free. This is a 6% chance to track monsters from beyond and then you would have a 5 plus 3 which is you're getting 8% chance just implicitly from the watchstones and uh, the atlas passive. And actually while we're looking at this, this is what I'm using. It looks like the game's about to close so I better show this now. You want to go um, This is because you you want it's 100% increased monsters, which spawns way more beyond. That's why you go down here, even though this is tempting. And you can ignore this and get Legion if you're doing Park. If you choose Park, you can go Legion. I prefer doing Abyss. Um, when should I be using my Divination Scarabs? 
These are way too expensive to use for the alleyway strat. When I had made that video, the, the scares were like 2 chaos, 3 chaos. Now I believe they're 12 chaos, approximately. Um, you should consider using it on Tropical Island when you're running Nemesis 3. Because uh, the Scout Divination card, while it's pretty rare, I, I would still... Like a Nemesis 3 map strategy is quite an expensive sunk cost, so I personally would use it. Um, what Scarab should I just stack in general when running Beyond? Uh, as we went over, you want pack size. So, Breach, Harbinger, Abyss, Elder, Legion, Blight. Now, if you've chosen Abyss on the uh, Atlas Passives, obviously you're going to use an Abyss Scarab every single time. If you've chosen Legion, you're going to use an, a Legion Scarab every time. With Breach, when you're running Breach with Beyond, it's kind of a little weird. You want to open the Breach, but you don't want to start blasting them right away. You, you kind of like, you open the Breach, then you, you walk away, you clear another area of the map for maybe like 10 seconds, because that way you can let the Breach monsters accumulate, and you'll just have like a massive screen of Breach monsters, which is what you're trying to do, right? Like this whole strategy revolves around trying to get very tightly knit monsters. But Breach is very good if you use it that way. Harbinger obviously gives tons of monsters. They're always spawned right on top of each other. It's great. Elder. Elder gives more monsters than Shaper. That's why Elder is a better uh, option. And Blight is very good as well for, sp for spawning lots of monsters. Um, so that's the end of this lesson on Beyond. I was originally intending to <laughs> run a Beyond math, but uh, I'm locked out Path of Exile. So I might, I might make that video tomorrow. Or I might wait a bit and I might like tack it on after. Uh, if I don't do that, uh, I will catch you guys in the next one. See ya.